I'm setting a dog on an unarmed man. No, on the ground! On the ground! Placing a child under arrest. These officers did the most despicable things, but little did they know, karma was right around the corner. Disclaimer. Number 1. Ryan Speakman On July 4th, 2023, there was a chase in Ohio between a commercial truck driver, Jadarius Rose, the Circleville police, and the highway patrol. Rose had been stopped by the police because his truck was missing a mud flap. He stopped but took off when he saw a gun aimed at him and called 911. Minutes later, he stopped and exited the vehicle, only to find himself surrounded by a whole bunch of officers shouting orders at him. But one order was way louder than all the rest. Do not, do not let them, don't release the dog. Do not release the dog with his hands up. This order was directed at Officer Ryan Speakman. Speakman had just arrived with his canine and immediately shouted orders at Rose. Police canine, you're going to get bit. Police canine, you're going to get bit. Final chance, you're going to get bit. Before troopers could blink, Speakman sprinted across the greens with the dog and released it. Sir, chief. Here! Stop! Stop! Hit me! Sensing Rose was not a threat, the canine ran to the troopers first before Speakman ordered it to attack the unarmed man. On the ground! On the ground! On the ground! Get it off! Get it off! The troopers immediately yelled at Speakman to get the dog off Rose, but the officer didn't listen. Even with an officer holding down Rose, Speakman kept the dog's teeth on him. By the time the dog was taken away, Rose was in a horrifying state. Speakman kept trying to justify his actions, but the troopers were not fooled. I, I think it's pretty well. I think it's a justifiable bite. That's why they seen that at me for. He wasn't complying. I mean, am I wrong? Was that not loud enough? He said it three, four more times. When they confronted him about not following orders, Speakman muted his camera. Muting law enforcement. Rose was taken to the hospital and later charged with failure to comply with an order. He's gotten a lawyer and is revving up for the mother of all lawsuits. As for Speakman, he's been kicked off the police department without the dog. If you think that's the only time officers have attacked someone who was complying, wait till you see what happened to this unarmed guy. But before we get to that, number two, Officer Dennis Turner. Here's something you don't see every day. In September 2019, Kaya Roll, a six-year-old first grader, was having a meltdown in school. During her tantrum, she kicked and punched a staff member. After taking the first grader to the principal's office, the school, Luscious and Emma Nixon Academy, came up with the wise idea of calling the police. Enter Orlando police officer Dennis Turner. He'd been with the force for 23 years. After discussing with the principal, Okay, she's gonna have to come with us now. Okay, Kai, you Stand gotta up. go with them, baby girl. Stand up. Turner handed zip ties to his partner. The six-year-old had no idea what was happening. All right, those four. It's for you. Keep your hands, okay? Uh -huh. Come over here, honey. As the officer tied her hands behind her back, Roll started to sob. No, no, I don't want you to come down. No. Turner then led the six-year-old out of the office and marched her through the school as she screamed and pleaded. He ignored her pleas as he lifted her into the car and shut the door. Officer Turner returned to talk to some teachers who were very upset. Yes. Oh, and if she was bigger, she would have been wearing regular handcuffs. But. He boasted that he'd arrested kids before. Um, I, the youngest I've ever arrested was seven. And he was stealing out of Albertsons and thought it was a joke. All the rest of the kids were crying and he was laughing. So that's the only reason he went to jail. 
He didn't think it was serious. The school thought she should be coming right back, but Turner had something different in store for the six-year-old. He took her to the juvenile assessment center, where she was charged with battery, fingerprinted, and even got a stool for a mugshot. When Roll's grandmother heard what had happened, she immediately took to the airwaves, and the story spread like wildfire. Investigators say the six-year-old and an eight-year-old were both taken into custody yesterday on unrelated charges. Now Orlando police are launching an internal investigation into this case. They say, what do you mean she was arrested? Say so there was an incident and she kicked somebody and she's being charged and she's on her way. She's arrested and she has a charge. She's charged with battery. She has a medical condition that we're working on getting resolved. So he says, what medical condition? So I said, you know, she has a sleep disorder, sleep apnea. He says, well, I have sleep apnea and I don't behave like that. The state immediately dropped the charges against the six-year-old and her record was expunged. The criminal process ends here. I refuse to knowingly play any role in the school to prison pipeline at any age. As for Officer Turner, he was fired and the department has been sued for $50,000. On behalf of myself and the entire Orlando Police Department, I apologize to the children involved and their families. We could not fathom the idea of a six-year-old being put in the back of a police car. Getting tossed out for arresting a child is bad enough, but it's nowhere near as bad as what Officer Rodriguez did to an unarmed man. Number three, Matthew Rodriguez. Jaquan Smith's day was not off to a good start. The 19-year-old was in the Warren Police Department jail after being arrested for charges involving carjacking and possession of weapons, but his day was about to get much worse. Smith was in the fingerprint room with Officer Matthew Rodriguez awaiting fingerprinting. The the two appeared to exchange words when suddenly Rodriguez attacked the teenager and just wailed on him. Two officers rushed in but did little to stop Rodriguez from punching the teenager in the back of the head and slamming it into the ground. And Rodriguez wasn't done yet. After dragging Smith from the floor by his hair, Rodriguez bundled him out and threw him head first into a holding cell, slamming the door behind him. Smith suffered a number of injuries from the assault. There were no broken bones. Um, he did have, uh, there were contusions, uh, there was the, the head trauma from being, the, the blunt force trauma from being slammed into the the concrete from being punched in the face, which was another head trauma. This wasn't the first time the Warren police officer had been accused of using excessive force, but it would be his last. No one's above the law, including Mr. Rodriguez, who took an oath of office, and as such, he will be prosecuted just as anyone else would be prosecuted, but it gives a black eye to all law enforcement, and it gives a black eye to the ones that try to do their best every day. Rodriguez was fired from the department and charged with misdemeanor assault and deprivation of rights. Smith has sued the department for a whopping $50 million. Officers can do really foolish things in the heat of the moment, but what happens when they pull dirty tricks on purpose to get people in trouble? Number four, Courtney Brown and Christy Wilson. There are many things you can use a coin toss app for, but you'll never guess what these officers used it for. In April 2018, Sarah Webb was speeding to work when she got pulled over by Roswell police officers Courtney Brown and her partner Christy Wilson. Webb was apologetic and tried explaining she was running late for work. You know how fast you were just going, ma'am? I'm so sorry. I'm late for work. But the officer wouldn't hear a word of it. So you could go over 80 miles per hour on 92? No, ma'am. You have your driver's license and your insurance card? No, Turn off the car and pass me the keys, please. After getting Webb's license, Brown headed to her patrol car. Then she revealed something unexpected. She had no proof Webb was speeding. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take her probably for reckless. Okay. She flew past me going probably 80, 85 on 92 in the wet road. She said she's running late for work. I had to get up to 90 to catch her. I mean, I don't have any speed detection, so at the same time, but. Brown and Wilson couldn't decide what to do next. What do you think? So these law officers decided the only way out was a coin toss. Yes, you heard that right. Brown handed her phone to Wilson, who opened a coin flip app, and the two started speaking in codes. Who's that? A head, R tail. Okay. <laughs> the two officers giggled hearing the digital coin. Wilson told Brown that it was tails. This is tail, right? 
Yeah. Clearly not the first time they've done this, but instead of releasing Webb, Wilson had something else up her sleeves and mentioned the number 23. Oh, really? 23. Brown replied with the word, which seemed like another code for arrest. Michael Jordan? <laughs> Hi. Then the two giggled as they came up with charges to arrest Webb. So I got too, too fast for, let me write this down. Too fast for conditions. Rec is it reckless? reckless? For, yeah, you can do reckless um, and then speeding. And you're just going to have to mark the pace one instead of the... I mean, either way, the speed limit here is what, 45? Yeah. 45. She was going way... Yeah. I mean... I haven't done one like speeding like that, yeah. so that's so why I'm do, a little bit unsure. Webb was expecting a ticket and was shocked to find herself in cuffs. Why would you find out? Step out of the vehicle. Turn off your hands on your back. Because, ma'am, you're driving entirely too fast for conditions. You put a lot of people's lives in jeopardy, okay? Could it be a favor and step in front of my vehicle, ma'am? She cried all the way to the station, not quite believing what was happening. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Uh, I really have to be at work. Is there any way I can just pay a ticket? She had no idea a coin had determined her fate. It was when the video got out two months later that Webb realized she was the butt of a very sick joke. They're very um, degrading and rude and mean. I was very angry and upset. Um, it just hurt to know that you know, these people are supposed to be looking out for you, and my it was a game to them. Both officers were fired from the police department, and charges against Webb were dropped. One thing with body cameras, they always catch officers saying and doing stupid things. Just like when Officer Bogard was caught saying the most shocking things. Number 5. Officer Joseph Bogard In September 2017, Columbus officers confronted Timothy Davis at a convenience store over multiple arrest warrants. When he refused to comply, the officers beat Davis till his pants fell off. Put your hands behind your back. I'm not doing no Six officers finally pinned Davis to the ground, face down, but they continued to punch and electrocute Davis with a taser. By the time Davis was cuffed and arrested, he could barely walk and had to be dragged away and lifted into the police van. At the station, Davis was carried inside to be charged and booked. Davis' assault was so brutal that when he appeared in court, his face was still busted up and he couldn't walk. Davis suffered kidney failure and had a couple of broken ribs. A cell phone video of the assault went viral and the community was outraged. I'm fighting for all of us, black, white, brown, poor, Muslim, Christian, it doesn't matter. You ought to be ashamed of yourselves. That video was horrible. So we're giving you seven days to explain this video to the citizens of Columbus. Investigations do take time, unfortunately. Um, we don't have everything available to us at the moment. Um, uh, seven days is, is a stretch to get an investigation done. But it wasn't just because of the excessive use of force. It was because of the shocking comments one officer made over his body camera. Who are we tasing for? Why don't we just choke the life out of them? I think they did for a while. They were Good. Like, they were Good. Yeah, I don't like that. That's the voice of Officer Joseph Bogard, and that wasn't even the worst thing he said that night. While paramedics looked Davis over, he began gasping for air and calling for help. Oh, stop it. Not only did Bogard brush it off, he laughed and made even more shocking statements. Then maybe you shouldn't have fought like an asshole. I can't breathe through it. No. It's exhausting, but I'll try. <laughs> I'm a little aroused at this, Davis. Just so you know, he's right one. This of, way, sir. He's one of those guys that, you, like, I'd have to choke him. Yeah. Like, I'd ha you'd have to put him out. Yeah. And you have to fight him. You have to choke him. Yeah. No, I'm gonna real for real armbar you, and then when that still doesn't work, <coughs> I'm gonna choke the life out of you. <coughs> and then while you're drooling on yourself. Bogard hadn't even been there during the takedown. He'd only shown up after the arrest, but this talkative mouth landed him in hot water. Bogard was suspended. The officer's been relieved of duty. 
taken his badge and gun away from him until we know whether or not those comments reflect the type of behavior that he exhibits out there on the street towards our citizens. As for Davis, he sued the department for excessive use of force and won a $225,000 settlement. If you think getting caught by your camera is rare, watch as one officer is caught literally red-handed by his own camera. Number 6. Marco Burke Body cameras are supposed to catch perps in the act, but sometimes the perps are the ones wearing the badge. That's precisely the case of Marco Burke, a Middle Tennessee State University police officer. Just after midnight on May 10th, 2018, Burke was directed to respond to a car crash involving a reckless driver. When Burke arrived, he found an abandoned vehicle. After a brief sweep of the vehicle, Burke returned to his car and reported nothing unusual going on. Just the vehicle is unoccupied. I don't, um, that's it. But before the end of his shift, he was placed under arrest and charged with five counts of theft while working. Why? Well, the car was bait, and the cameras it had captured Burke in a compromising position. But this story had started months ago, when an AR-15 gun had gone missing from a police locker. Suspicion fell on Burke, but he denied it, so the police chief set up a sting to catch him red-handed. Was, was he going to report these items? as being part of the inventory of things taken from that car. They'd hidden $1,100 in cash and bottles of Oxycontin, filled with sugar pills, in the car and set up hidden cameras. But it was Burke's body camera that sealed his fate. It captured him rummaging through the bait car and picking the items that had been planted. Then Burke also grabs $1,100 cash and another bottle of pills. Moments later, he returned to his squad car where you hear the sound of shuffling papers possibly counting his ill-gotten loot. That night, he was forced to explain to his wife why he wouldn't be coming home. I got caught up in, uh, in, in something, and I got in trouble. I know what I did. He did his thing. And, and I got caught. I'm so impaired. Burke ended up pleading guilty to three felonies. It's hard to fight when you filmed yourself with your hand in the cookie jar. 